So this is Genesis chapter 14. This is when Abraham rescues Lot. It happened in the days of Amraphel, king of Shinar, Arioc, Kedor Laoma, Tidal, that they made war with Berar, king of Sodom. Now, we've just read that Lot chose to go and live in Sodom, while Abraham chose the land that wasn't quite so good. But then God said to him, look at, around you where you are, Abraham, look north, south, east and west. He looked over all the land, including Sodom, and God said, I'll give this to you forever. Anyway, Lot chose the bright lights. He chose the well-watered plain, and he'd gone to live in Sodom. And now there's a group of other kings come and attack Sodom. And there was a huge battle. The kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled from the battle. And their enemies came and took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all the food and went their way. And they took Lot, Abraham's brother's son, who lived in Sodom and his goods and departed. So you see, Lot thought, ah, oh, yeah, it's better to go and live in Sodom. I'll get rich. Everything will be cool. And he goes there and... Yes, all went well to start with, but then these nations, these other kings attacked Sodom and took away him and his goods. Now, someone who escaped came and told Abraham the Hebrew. Now, Abraham was living by the oak trees of Mamre. When Abraham heard that his relative Lot had been taken captive, he led out his trained men, born in his family, 318, and chased them as far as Dan. So they had like a little army. Yeah, Abraham was a big man. He was quite wealthy, very wealthy. He had 318 trained soldiers, really, who were with him in his extended family. So Abraham goes chasing after these people to rescue Lot. They attack them and chase them to Hobar near Damascus. And he brought back all the goods and brought back his relative Lot and all his goods and the women as well and the people. The king of Sodom went out to meet Abraham after he returned from this great battle. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, that's Jerusalem, brought out bread and wine and he was priest of God Most High. Now, you see, when we take the bread and wine, that goes all the way back to how in these very early days of God's dealings with people on this earth. They even took bread and wine back then. And there was a priest, Melchizedek, king of righteousness, who was also king of Jerusalem. And Paul talks about him in the New Testament, and he says that this Melchizedek was a type of Jesus. A type means that he was similar to Jesus. He pointed forward to Jesus. He was a priest, and he gave bread and wine even though this Melchizedek was not, as far as we know, uh, a Hebrew. He wasn't one of the descendants of Abraham, as far as we know. And he certainly wasn't from the priestly tribe of Levi. Anyway, Melchizedek, king of Jerusalem, brings out bread and wine. He was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed Abraham and said, Blessed be Abraham of God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth, and praise to God Most High who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. The king of Sodom said to Abraham, Give me the people and take all the goods to yourself. But Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted up my hand to Yahweh, God most high, possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take a thread, nor a sandal strap, nor anything that's yours, lest you should say, I made Abraham rich. I will accept nothing from you except that which the young men have eaten and the portion of the men who went with you. Aina, Eshkol and Mamre, let them take their portion. So we should not get rich because of our work for God. We should do it from love. And although Abraham was rich, he wanted people to know that it was God who had made him rich, not because he went and had a battle and, and took the spoil. You know, the spoil means like the things that belong to the people that you conquer. That's a really good example. 
that Abraham did not try to get rich and true Christianity and true service of God is not a business. It's to be done because we truly serve God and love him. After these things, the word of Yahweh came to Abraham, saying, Don't be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield and your exceedingly great reward. So he's saying to Abraham, Well done. You didn't try to make yourself rich. I will be your great and rich reward. Just like when Abraham and Lot separated and Lot looked at the green pasture land going off to Sodom and said, I want that. I want the best for myself. And Abraham said, okay, you can take it. And God then took him up into a mountain and said, look, look out north, south, east and west. Look out over all that land of Sodom that Lot's chosen. I'm going to give this to you anyway, Abraham. So we should not keep thinking about getting ourselves wealthy. We should just believe in God's promises like Abraham did and show love for our brother as he did towards Lot, even though he'd separated from him. Well, God had said to Abraham, I'm your shield, I'm the one who gave you victory, looked after you, protected you, and I am your great reward. Abraham said, Lord, what will you give me since I go childless, and he who will inherit all my estate is Eliezer of Damascus. That was sort of his, his manager who managed the family. Abraham said, Behold, to me you have given no seed, although God promised to give him a seed. And behold, one born in my household is my heir, this Eliezer. And the word of the Lord came to Abraham, saying, This man will not be your heir, but he who will come out of your own body will be your heir. Well, him and Sarai had not been able to have children, as you know. So, he must have struggled to really believe this. Well, Yahweh brought him outside and said, Abraham, look now toward the sky and count the stars if you're able to count them. Can you count how many stars there are in the sky? No. You can start counting, but as soon as you think you've counted, then you start to see more and more and more. And God said to Abraham, so will your seed be. No, but has man ever, does man know how many stars there are? Well, no, not really, because no matter how good your telescopes are, the more you keep looking, the more you see more and more and more of them. So it's amazing. Abraham believed in God, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Now, Paul makes a big deal about that verse in the New Testament, and he says that Abraham was counted as if he was righteous because he believed. So we're all naughty, aren't we? We're all naughty. You naughty, Daniel? You naughty, Evia? We're all naughty, and we can't seem to be as good as we'd like to be. Do you like being naughty, Daniel? No. Do you like being naughty, Evia? No. I don't like being naughty. But we all are, and we don't want to be like that. And we think, well, how can I change? And I suppose we're never going to be perfect, but God knows that. And so he operates like this. He says, look, if you believe, I will count that to you for righteousness. I will count you as if you're righteous, though you're not. And Paul explains how that works for us, that if we believe in Jesus, the great seed of Abraham, and if we're baptised into Jesus, then it's as if we're clothed with his righteousness, and God looks at us as if we're as good as Jesus. 